Education meetings, a special meeting convened Friday, January 20, 20th, 2017, the time of now 601. Uh, the Reverend Fleck Ball, board members are present. Uh, if we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, so an assessment of risks have already been done for regards to security, and you're saying there's no increase 
particular risk to the current elementary students in that school? Right? No, we don't anticipate one. Okay. Um, and then the security plans will be updated to include those preschool children when they're due again? Yep. Okay. Okay, so you feel very confident that the security will be maintained at the highest level that it currently is for those preschool children as well as for the elementary school children in that building. Yes. Okay. And then as far as disruption to um, the other elementary school children, another concern I have that I'm sure you're going to look into is just because there's going to be standard pickups and drop-offs and it sounds like you already have experience with that. And while the kids are going to the playground, that's also going to be looked at and make sure there aren't any accidents and there's any traffic control and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that gives me peace of mind, thank you. Um, then the other question I have with regards to that is, and I tried to listen to the video on this, and so I apologize if I asked something that was already addressed, I just didn't quite hear it since I was the last thing. The program director for this, is that you? Is that what I understood? Uh, we haven't exactly decided. We haven't named someone the program director yet. What um, we have discussed is that the principal and I have different duties. The principal's duties revolve around the day-to-day -day activities of the children in the building. My office, myself and my office, are taking care of everything external. So all of the agreements with child care resources, all the communications um, you know, that go out district-wide that we're offering this now, all of that would occur through my office. And just the day-to-day -day immediate communications of between the principal and, and a parent, if needed, um, would take place by the principal. So the face for the parent is the principal? Or is it the face is the, is the principal, but the um, all of the external work and background work will be done by my office. Okay. okay. And so that's the person that's going to, so the ownership of the program is going to be joint? I, I don't, or we, have, we haven't defined it that way yet. Um, it's just a division of responsibility. Okay. So basically, my office will do everything we can do. There are some things we can't do on site. Okay. And then um, when I looked through this, it said that there's no increase in funding. So is there additional compensation for this? these additional responsibilities? Or is that, I mean, I misunderstood this slide thing. But additional, is there additional, additional compensation for these additional programs for being added, either for you or for whoever is identified as the joint the joint program directors, do they get additional? Are you sure for you? Is there it says no additional? No. Fund no, that says no, no increase to the budget. And that's actually, there is a difference. There is no comp additional compensation for anyone. Okay. Um, but the, that actually says there's no increase in the budget. Um, we talked, I talked, and I think I talked about it at length on that night, about how we anticipate a reallocation of resource of the teachers from some of our uh, classes where uh, enrollment continues to decrease. Okay. Um, and the additional aids will be paid for through UPK. Through UPK. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on. Okay. So um, I reviewed um, the documents up to very late last night. I see that there was an, a change in one of them. Can you assist me to tell me if anything was changed today? A different MLA was posted, um, and what other changes? Um, we added, I think, a sentence to each one of the agreements indicating that we would review them with the bargaining units this time next year to make sure that any changes needed to be made. Okay, where do I find that statement? Uh, it's going to depend on the MOA. I think in the RTA it's number 25, and the PSO maybe number 11 or 12, uh, versus I think it's probably number that there would be an evaluation every year, so it's not at the end of the three years. It's a three-year district pilot, but the MOA will be reviewed by the leaders of the bargaining unit in the district this time next year to make sure that any modifications need to be made. We would have a negative. Okay, I'm just trying to read what yeah, was in there. Three confidence number twenty-five. What number are the principles, please? <coughs> 14, I have it. 14. So this, this whole section is new? That one sentence is new. I 
And so notwithstanding any other provisions here into the contrary, the parties will meet by no later than January 15, 2018 to decide whether to continue this MOA for the 2018-19 school year. If the parties decide to do to, decide to do so, the parties shall execute an extension of this MOA. If either party decides not to do so, this MOA will expire as of June 30, 2018. So this so, is basically so that I can understand there's the privilege to all three groups involved that are signing these MOAs to decide next year whether to re-sign again or not. Yeah, I understand clear, what we recall kind of a sunset clause meaning that you know, if either party decides that the MOA is not working for them for whatever reason, it gives us a mechanism to come back together and say, okay, what are the issues that are not working for either side? So it's, a, it's pretty standard language in, in supplementary memorandums. Okay. I just like thought I missed it first, and then I went back on my way out and saw that you know, something was changed. The other question I had sent by email, um, also late, because some of the documents I, I had finally um, received, so um, had to do with the wording. So in the resolution, it leaves it as a blank statement that the program would be held in an elementary school. It doesn't specify which one. I also looked at the other um, documents attached that we're going to vote on today, the teacher's MOA, as well as the um, uh, nurses don't mention a school, but the principals does. What is the purpose for that? Discrepancy, what happens is each of those are, are discussed and negotiated differently uh, with the bargaining unit president. And so I think it's our clear intention to have the program be at Viola for next year in discussion with Pat Green, who was the PSO president at the time. Steve Thompson and I had a, a discussion in which we laid out all of the proposed parameters in the MOA. Um, and when we agree on them, we want to make sure that we're following through and being true to our word with the, with the bargaining unit. So it was a subject of discussion with the principals. It just wasn't. So our clear just, intent, to be clear, the uh -huh. clear intention is to have it be a pilot. When we discussed it with the, with the teachers, we were not specific about what our intentions were? It just simply wasn't a priority from the teacher's end to have a specific building listed. Um, my understanding is the teachers will move whoever's full applying to the building where it's being held, right? Ms. Weber explained that it's not necessarily by all the teachers, but it's whoever is mm -hmm. going to be selected through the process. So again, I'll revisit the question um, that came up on the 10th um, of why not splitting it between Sheridan and Bayoma uh, to alleviate some of the burden on one building's resources, whether not just the principal, but the nurse, the building nurse, the you know the administrators, uh, you know security concerns, whatever it is. Why not? Because we're having four sections have two of them in each building. For example, Sheridan. This is a new program. Uh, while the teachers who end up teaching it will definitely be certified for pre-K, they may or may have not taught pre-K, and they probably haven't taught pre-K in the last 10 years because we don't have any too many teachers who've been teaching less than 10 years. And so uh, we really wanted to make sure they have the opportunity to work together on a daily basis in a brand new program to talk to each other, consult with each other, oh, how'd it go for you, how'd it go for me? That's much easier to do when they're in the same place. So that was one of our priorities when we talked about the program, that the teachers would have the opportunity to work together as much as possible. That's best done if they're in the same place. So the technology that we have in Ramapo that really shortens distances to the globe, basically those two teachers cannot confer, you know, online, uh, you know. Um, they absolutely could. We think it, we thought it was ideal to have them right in classrooms next to each other or in very close proximity so that it can literally be, you know, a second here, a second there, a, as the kids are walking in at lunch, that they would have all those opportunities. And considering all the correspondence we've received over the last few days, um, with parents really concerned about why we're not doing this at Charlie Lane, in addition, not instead of other buildings, um, why wouldn't we why wouldn't we reconsider at least not having the word Viola in the principal's MLA and leaving it open so that we have the freedom until the program is kicked off or maybe next year um, to reconsider the location? Why not leave it open as we've left it in the resolution, we've left it in the other MLAs, why not be less specific and have that little flexibility? Can somebody answer that please? I can't. I can't. The language in the MOA is not um, what is driving the decision to have it by you know, We can certainly detail to the board if the board would like the rationale to have it at Viola. If for some reason um, we were unable to have it at Viola because 
they had an amazing surge in enrollment and they weren't able to we weren't able to accommodate it there. We would just ask the principals for a new MOA. Now, that's not the the issue, and that's not certainly the driving reason why we would have an MOA. It's simply codifying our decision to have an MOA. And again, if the board wants, I'm sure we can share uh, several reasons why why it makes sense. Can, can you share why you were on October 9th, please? Um, so I shared some of the reasons last week. Yeah, could you, could you, if you can, for what you, what you can say, at least, um, why is that my own? So I shared some of the reasons last week, and some of them aren't much different between the chairman <coughs> and some are a little more different. Um, for starters, there's available space. Uh, there's a very accessible parking and drop-off. Uh, the classrooms, uh, potential classrooms, have a very close proximity to both the entrance and exit, the nurse's office, and the main office. So it just requires the kids don't have to go as far as deeply into the building to get where they're going. They don't have to go up and down stairs. The access is on the entry level. Um, in addition, the, um, the idea, of, we, we would not be having this conversation right now if not for the initiative shown by a couple of Viola teachers. Um, two teachers in particular that presented with me in September, they were the art, literally the origin of this idea. They came to us just about a year ago with that idea. They have worked through the spring, <coughs> through the fall. They have contacted me repeatedly after the September presentation right up until the January presentation. What can we do to help? What can we do to help? After Tuesday's presentation, they have made arrangements to visit several sites in New Jersey that are sites that they've worked with when they got a lot of the ideas for this, Ramsey, Franklin Rent Lakes, we've set up um, visits, and we think that goes a long way. I'm not saying that in another building they wouldn't be as excited and as interested in hosting it, but the Viola teachers in particular have shown incredible initiative and um, really dedication to this. Um, and so, in honoring that, um, you know, that was an in, that's an influence, that's a, it's a non-tangible, it's not about space and it's not about um, this or that, but it's something that, you know, it, it's, we wouldn't be having the conversation if not for that. Um, in addition, those, uh, those teachers and the principal at Viola on their own went to professional development last spring when this idea was just still you know, in its very infant stages, they've taken on the responsibility of going to their own professional development in pre-kindergarten. Uh, pre um, and also, it's a little easier access um, to our geographic centers of the district. It's not incredible, it's not much easier, but it's a little bit easier to get to um, for some of our parents for whom transportation may be a little more challenging. Okay, so as far as the parking drop-off and, and, and pick-up, I know that um, I'm familiar with the chair lane building where there's a separate drop off and pick up. I mentioned that also on the 10th that leads directly to where the, the past kindergarten classrooms have all been housed, which is where it seems to be the largest number of empty classrooms is in chair lane, you know, with the lower incoming kindergarten classes. So drop off and pick up would be directly through the cafeteria right to class if this is where it was housed. So I don't foresee that being a problem. Um, as far as the teachers, which we all enjoyed their presentation, really valued the legwork they did researching this and bringing it to Alamo. And I think the idea came even farther before that, uh, as it was part of the strategic planning uh, presentations that we heard in order to increase enrollment to try to test the pre-K program here. Um, so while we value that, you're, you had said these may not be the actual teachers that teach the program. So overall, it's going to depend on other factors, seniority and you know otherwise. So you know, I'm I'm still you know failing to see, and I just want to voice that that we should revisit you know where it is and how it is a little bit more. I understand there's a deadline at the end of the month, hence our meeting is you know a special meeting today to get the vote. But I think a lot of this work was done over a short period of time. The other item I would add to that is, um, I don't know that we're going to have enough kids for two classes. We're putting it out there, we're hoping for two classes. I don't know we're going to have enough kids this year for two classes. In the timeline I shared at the last meeting, I believe in May I put that little caveat about amend based on enrollment. So we don't know what that's going to bring. 
Okay. But, but we're talking about two classes in the same building. So I would like to consider, as a board and as an administration, that if in fact we have four sections, and I hope we do, four at least or more, that we consider other buildings that are in terrible need for filling some classrooms and bringing the enrollment up. And also bringing families to those neighborhoods who are more likely going to want to stay where the child was in pre-K, um, although it feeds into all our schools, as you said, but still, parents would prefer not to move between one year and the next and to be close to their home. And your professional opinion, I, I value your opinion. You do believe that vinyl is the spot to have it as an educator and as an administrator? Yes. Okay. So I understand, I'm going to say anything too. I just, I, I, I was an administrator of my own job, but I don't have an educational experience. I'll be the first one to admit that. And if you're telling us there's reasons that are beneficial for the children and the school, and not the school, for the children and the whole program, I appreciate you being honest with that. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so all those in favor, 2.04 to 2.04. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Attentions? Oh, I moved. Okay, so, so second. No, I didn't post. That's <laughs> pretty quick. That's pretty quick. Um, <laughs> I have to look at the numbers. So I'll, I'll please call the MOA um, for the principals, not two or three, to vote on that separately. Thank you. I already called the vote. Okay, okay. so I have seen on that one. I vote aye on the other two. What do you vote on two or three? Two or yes. three is an abstain. Two or three. I didn't vote. I said nothing. We already moved and we seconded. And now okay. just kind of under But that's how it is because I didn't have time. Okay, so so move 2.01 to 2.04. Okay, 2.05. Suffern High School School Suffern High School Roof Repair Declaration of Emergency. Chair retain a motion to accept two point we're gonna do them all separate because I don't want the same issue. 2.05 uh, as so stated. So moved. The Craig. I'll second that. Second Clark. Any discussion? Discussion. Amani, you have questions? Yep. I can email my questions. Do you want to go ahead and say? Yeah, well, we. Um, you, did, you got the email back, right? I didn't get anything back. There was an email back with the answer. Right. We can go through the packet in front of everybody as well. Okay, do you want to brief me on it? Because I don't know what sure. um, As far as the uh, question, as far as the budget itself will be amended, it will be a transfer to capital funds. The, the, by declaring an emergency, there's really four benefits for the school district. One is we can do this work without voter approval. If not, we would have to wait till May to even begin the process. At the state education department, once the, the resolution is passed, we'll do an expedited review. Basically, we'll cut in line because it normally is about a five-month period for a normal project to get reviewed. We'll receive state aid at our aid ratio next year versus over 15 years. And uh, we, we can expedite contractors on the job versus the more formal bidding process. So those are the benefits. And because of that, there's a very narrow group of projects that will pass through that, uh, the, those tests. About 13,000 square feet of the high school roof passes those tests. They must be dealt with for issues of health and safety, issues of preservation of asset. SED is ready to review those. So, with this resolution, the board would be approving amending the budget, taking the district's fund balance, the reserves, and spending it for this purpose. Uh, we'll physically be increasing the size of the budget and spending it through transfer to capital. And I gave the account code. We gave you a breakdown of the 420,000. Primarily, it's construction costs. We do have a $30,000 contingency in there, which hopefully we won't need. But we won't know some things until we start digging in as far as whether any of the insulation could be saved or whether it's more that's got to go. Uh, but we feel 450 will be sufficient. None of this work is going to be done during school hours. We're also going to stage it in such a way that it will be behind the building for anything that is coming in after hours or on weekends. We're actually thinking that because work can't occur until there's at least 40 degrees consistently, um, that we might actually do this work over the April break physically. Um, we can do most of it during that. we got about nine uh, consecutive days there that we really can fight off most of the job uh, during that point. There will be a clear demarcation between the two roof 
we get a little bit of the roof structures. Um, but basically, it's a, it's a poured roof versus a layered roof. And um, I have two experts actually who can speak more to the details, but the feeling for both the architect and uh, from our understanding is that this will be a more of a bound one uh, structure versus kind of, I guess the analogy would be, it's like cake versus a sandwich, I think is what we use. So, you know, the problem we have now is the wind's basically peeled a membrane from the glue from this and that. This is more adhered as a whole, uh, you know, heterogeneous <coughs> structure. So, um, we think that that's, um, and it'll be a little test for us too. It'll be the first yeah. time we've seen this. West Point is putting these roofs into their uh, buildings there. Orange County BOCES. Uh, has done it, and Chester uh, in Orange County is now going this route. But clearly we have a lot of roof work to do. This is just 13,000 square feet. The entire building is how many square feet? 255,000. Yeah. So the, some of that 255,000 we will need to get to sooner. We can't declare an emergency because it doesn't meet health and safety. The asset is still preserved. But you will, we are putting a budget together where we are going to look at the pool roof. And probably over the next eight to ten years, that whole entire roof will have to be replaced. So this will be uh, a very good test. There'll be a clear demarcation, something like a uh, expansion joint between the old roof and the new roof. We're pursuing nicer. Uh, does view it as an insurable case. Uh, they've had uh, the roof experts there. We have adjusters. Obviously, things don't move sometimes as quickly as we like, and that also includes issues of Warranty and the installer. We're having meetings. You know, people are hemming and hawing. So, worst case scenario, there's an expenditure of four hundred fifty thousand dollars. We get about half of it back next year with state aid. Anything we recoup from either insurance or from uh, warranties would reduce the local share and would reduce the state aid. So again, we'll go from a 225000 net cost to some smaller number if we can bring in some of these other revenues. And I do think, fortunately, we have a very good insurer. I think the insurer is going to step up, and they may actually do some of the heavy lifting of going after the roof warranty and things like that. They may subrogate back. They mentioned that. But again, until we get it in writing, until it goes through adjusters, you know, it's, uh, it's not something I can say, here's, the, here's actually the revenue that's coming from those other sources. Um, so I think that kind of summarizes most of the concerns that were in there, but I think we can obviously answer any other questions. There is an SAT test in April, so just be aware of that. The dates are online, so I put those up. Yep. Um, bearing in mind, there's a Saturday when yes. kids are going to be taking a test. We and, won't have it that day. Yeah. And so you're saying mostly not during school days, you're going to wait to April to yes. actually do the work. It, it, that may work out perfectly for both temperature, getting the contractors lined up, and obviously we won't have the issue at all. The, the climate too. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't hear what you said, the expectancy on the remaining roof is how long? One of the, uh, this roof is 2020? 2020, 2020 is, is the, academic, the academic way in 2021 would be the pool area industrial arts way. <clears throat> So, so the pool area was affected in this event in November, but it's not ready to be done now? It doesn't meet the tenets of being an emergency. We would not be able to spend public funds without voters approving that. Was the damage not as severe? Right. No. Yep, it is not right. It's not, as, it's not as exposed to the elements. Uh, there's no concern from everyone who's looked at it that preservation of the asset would be compromised by going to more form, you know, more traditional and you to the voters. So the emergency has to meet that, again, a higher test. Anyway. And what you're saying is whatever we can get back from the insurance, which is more likely than the warranties, mm -hmm. uh, or easier to pursue, we get half of that because half of it is going to be going state, back to the state. Yeah, the state's case. insisting that they see an active pursuit because obviously they are, they're in the game now too with us. So yeah, we're basically 50-50 with that. We definitely so, love to see that. We, yeah. yeah maybe, we tried as hard as we could. Yeah, and that's why the resolution funds. speaks to that. Uh, and where we are, I'm even meeting with the warranty company Tuesday, uh, the, um, as well as the, the installer of that section right. of the roof. And then the last thing was, um, you know, health-wise, material safety data sheets. They are in there. I mean, I'll have to defer. I, uh, it is a bio-based product. Thank you. There is a, it's bio-based, but I'll, 
I'm definitely beyond my knowledge source on almost all the pieces. There's a base level and a top coat. They're both, they're both included there. Thank you very much for providing that, Susan. Sure. Sorry, I had to do it twice. Quick question, going back to the pool for a second, because you said that was a fairly newer group. Yeah. And and we had talked about looking at what made that possibly deteriorate quickly, even though it's not being considered an emergency. Right. So from a warranty standpoint, are we still looking into that and seeing, and then of course, I'm assuming we're going to look at whatever better technology is out there, because I'm sure the pool with humidity and temperature and everything else that's in that room is impacting this to some degree. Yeah, we do. We're doing core samples so we'll be able to see. The original plants had what's known as a vapor barrier, which you'd expect to see above a pool. There was a replacement in 2009, which NICE are paid for, and you know we're, we're working on the assumption that also, you know, they called for the vapor barrier, that that continued to be in there. Uh, but until we do the core sample, we're not going to get that answer. But we're, yeah, we very much think there was either installation or, you know, we were Absolutely. frustrated. This thing should be lasting. Well, and the only reason um, I ask is because if we're going to end up replacing it, yeah. then if, if what we did didn't work, yeah, right. Don't do what's going to work? Yeah. yeah. So at least uh, learn from, you know, not that it was our mistake, but let's mm -hmm. learn from what didn't work and see what's out there that's going to hold up longer because clearly we didn't get our warranty out of it or our shelf life out of it, I should say. Yes, and it was, uh, the warranty company is pointing, there's a lot of exclusions, there's a lot of uh, legal language in these. Like any other insurance company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> unless you need it, right? Or unless you harass them. <laughs> yeah. So we are, it's going to be a story that's going to continue. It'll be a fight But it's too. a little better feeling now than when it was first uh, brought to you. Yeah. One, the, the immediate work that has to be done is a little narrower, nicer, seems to be stepping up. And again, we got SCD uh, there for the approval, too. So. I want to stay on the pool roof. It, it's okay to be used in the condition it is, mm -hmm. even though it can't be repaired because it didn't qualify for the emergency right now. Right, structurally it's fine, there's no water penetrating. The ceiling's not gonna fall on anybody's head in the pool, or I just, <laughs> well, I just wanna make sure it's all, all good. But we, we're not gonna wait a number of years to bring you a solution to it. We're gonna, okay. months to bring you a solution. Thank you. And so that was inspected and that was 100% sure that that would have it's structurally fine, it's just uh, it needs attention. It needs to have work done. And it has skylights also, is that right? My yes, there are more. Inside Larry, not. Uh, no. They're four, don't you? Yes. Okay. They're already in. And those are okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both sessions. Okay, so we'll two point zero six, Chairman made a motion to accept two point zero six as so stated. Frank Clark. Yep, sounds good. Any discussion? No? All those in favor should have five by seven. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, two point zero seven. Chair has made a motion to accept two point zero seven as so stated. So moved. Clark. Craig. I'm sorry. Craig. Craig Clark. Any discussion? No? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Okay, that is it for the agenda. No, I asked for an amendment. He said I can make a motion to amend the agenda to include an additional item regarding the conference next week. Um, well, we can put it to a vote, I guess. But it's not on the agenda. Yeah. I sent an email. Yeah. The advocacy institute. I didn't see the note. I didn't see it. Right. I didn't see it. It was sent on the 11th and then yesterday. It doesn't always get on the agenda. It's a special meeting. It's really for those two purposes. Right. Um, but the reason you know, it would be on the agenda is the urgency because the deadline to register is today. I'm trying to get there before 12 o'clock. Well, I'm not going to vote on today. We can have it as a discussion. Okay. Sorry. Can we decide? So my understanding is this is a con an advocacy conference that can help us um, learn what we want to advocate for, correct? And then from the video that I saw at the last meeting, it was brought up. Um, so can we consider it? I mean, I think that. I think it was worth it. 
Yeah, I think the meeting I said we went we said sure. that the next meeting. I also mentioned it. Okay. And you said send me the information, which I get the next so morning. Right. Okay. Well okay. 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 next meeting we, we knew we were gonna have a special meeting. If you would like to if you are making a motion to uh um, to have a discussion and a discussion. Yes. All right, it's just gonna be a discussion though. So I need a second. Okay, I need a second. So, but question. Oh, I'm sorry. In order to expedite this so we don't waste money and then register late, like, is there anything that we can do to, like, you can't really vote to, I mean, well, let's talk about it. And then we'll, okay. So, I'll, I'll describe what I sent everybody. Hold on, I gotta show the motion's right. Hold on. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Motion is on for wanting to amend the agenda to add a discussion item with respect to the advocacy conference which is to be held next weekend in Washington, D.C. Seconded by Marlies. Seconded by Marlies. Any discussion with respect to amending the agenda? Okay. All those in favor to amend the agenda for that discussion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Okay. So it's, moved. it's on the agenda. Discussion item. Advocacy conference. I don't know the actual name of it, but the, the, the National uh, School Board Association <coughs> Advocacy Institute. The days are Sunday and Monday um, into Tuesday of next week, um, January, the end of January on. January 23rd. Yeah, thank you. Um, I sent an email to the board with all the information which had already um, all the board members received it the day of our last meeting. We all received it on January 10th. So I made mention of it at that meeting and then sent again a forward to you on the board on the 11th with more details. Um, basically, um, it would be very beneficial for us to get some leaders regarding our advocacy work here in Rainbow Central with some guidance and some training that's essential and is not available locally. Uh, DC is within a right, and uh, I'm going, I, I actually discussed it with my fellow board members who are members of the advocacy committee, namely Mr. Uh, Long, and Mr. Kern, um, either one of them is available to travel, and uh, I'm willing to take the time to go and learn more about advocacy and bring back information and share it with our board. So I guess, any other discussions? Well, I guess my first question is, um, what is the cost associated with it? As so I sent all that information. I, I would not fly, I'd probably drive or take the train, whatever the cheapest I can figure out. Um, I, also don't, I also really don't mind, um, you know, you had said on the 10th of January that you would look at the budget and see what's available, and whatever is not available, I'm willing to actually um, expend because I think it's, it's worth going there and participating. So I, I didn't get a response as far as to what's available officially. Uh, the well, I don't have any official. The text at 538 says $900. Right. If you wish to discuss that, I don't know where that came from because we had no board members who went to New York State um, School Board Association this year. Please let me finish. Thank you. Sure. Uh, no one attended the New York State conference this year. And for national, only two people are going as opposed to three or four that we usually set. So if you don't mind sharing the um, school board budget with all of us, that would be very helpful. This way we, we know what our expectations are. Right, but the problem is I don't have it here. All I know is there's about 950 left in the school board budget. So yeah, so you, I, I, you had a lot of days to research that. That's what I've been told. There's 950. I'm not second guessing administration or whomever. That's what I was told. So how how did we spend that. our 10,000 dollar budget? I don't know. I don't know. So I, that's not called to 950. Approximately, because there's some POs that haven't been So, do you want to budget 950 or less for this? Because we need to get moving because the deadline is here. And I well, presented it. Sure so, I'm not sure. sure if it's, the shortness of the time on this is, is problematic because it's not on for an action, it's not for discussion. So, I understand what you're saying. I also, you know, if anybody else wants to chime in or have any comments with respect to it, um, uh, I know the, the there's one of the highlights of the uh, or one of the uh, uh, workshops focused on that NISBA is actually advocacy, which was because they think there's eight of them that, that they're focused on advocacy is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure there's a ton of information at uh, NISBA that would be true. Um, this is so actually you know up to date information. 
not a uh, workshop online, so. Especially with a new Secretary of Education. I, I have a problem with it. I think Ops is good, but I guess the key is the board, we really can't just vote. Take literally a shot in the dark with how much is there and where it's coming from. I don't know how we do it as a board. I mean, that's, yeah, I have no problem with Trump. I, mean, I just don't know where it's, and I don't think that we don't, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't even know what we're voting on. Like, what account, how much is there? So I had a question. I was down at the floor. I probably missed it. I probably, <laughs> <laughs> I probably, I probably, I probably, so I had a question that wasn't even answered. So I was curious, and I don't know if you have the answer. Do we know how much the conference is? Because I know Terry's saying it's approximately nine hundred fifty dollars. You're saying you would most likely drive, so it wouldn't be. No, the conference is nine hundred fifty. No, I'm saying it's approximately nine hundred fifty left. Yeah, yeah, is what you're saying. What I'm asking is, do we know how much the cost? Um, did you forward the information to Angela? Angela, do you have the registration fee? Or do you want me to look it up real quick for you? No, no. The registration fee is seven hundred dollars. It's six something. Six ninety-five. Yeah, something. I'm correct. I, I, I didn't want to be inaccurate. And uh, you yeah. <laughs> know. So the registration. That's really the most urgent piece of it. The rest of it, we can definitely figure out. Well, well, it's 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 yeah. Yeah. If, if, if we don't have it in the budget, we don't have it. So we clearly are not spending money we don't have. But please go back and, and get the answer that you promised. What's there and what, where everything was spent. And what did promise anything? I, I, this, I know there's not even budget. January 10th, I'll check the budget and see how much is left. Yeah, yeah. I did. 950. That's what I did. So, so that's what I promised. Like 950 is what's left of the budget. Okay. So if that's what's there, so of course I haven't seen any paper. That's always the next to it. And that's what I was told. Nine hundred fifty. So. Is there anything yeah. else um, forthcoming after the Denver conference? I'm sorry. Is there anything else forthcoming after the Denver conference? After the what? After Denver. the Denver conference. After. Is there anything oh, um, else forthcoming? Greg, we've been here forever. Richard <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Right, before you answer, correct me if I'm wrong, Denver was rather expensive, so I don't know what the cost is for Denver. We voted on limits for that conference. We have limitations on airline, we have limitations on hotel, we voted all right, the limitations. In, in general, I'm not going, so I know it was a higher It really is. The entry fees have skyrocketed to the conference. It's like $700. And most of the cost is the registration. Right, that's a big one. But that's why I'm just trying to, if it's in the budget, I don't have an issue. If it's not, if we don't have the money in the budget. We didn't go to New York City this year, that's why. And are there any other local, like New York State, one days that are coming up that are similar that are, there is that are, the, that are brought uh, down to the to the state the, to local areas? That's the other question I would have. Next well, year, you know, well. next year we need to visit that budget too because the the NISPA conference is, no, is not going to be in New York City next year. It's going to be away. There um, is a there is a conference in Albany. Um, I don't have the dates, um, but I know Rock County School Board Association was. Sending out some emails today with respect to some issues that are going on with, with the governor's budget and some changes in verbiage that he's made with some of the things in the budget. Um, I forget what it's called. It's a state conference. I think what we it's, went it's free. I'm I'm um, going. It's free of cost. Right. So that's the next. So that's probably in Albany anyway. So we'll this nothing like that. Right and then of course there's other things that we want to you know do something collectively either through retreat wise or what happens. Mm -hmm. So there's other things that we can spend money on. So okay. it's. Uh, but just since you brought that up, I plan to be there free of charge for that. For this. For, yeah, yeah, because uh, I'll be there already for another conference and I doubled on that last year. Well, uh, the only, no, the only thing, the reason I asked is because we have a budget and we, we talked a lot about the budget last year and we had, we had some opportunities with reimbursement and some other things. I just want to make sure we're clear. If we have approximately $950 left, Six hundred ninety-five dollars for registration. That doesn't include the hotel cost. It won't cover so it. I don't, know what, so I don't know right. what the hotel cost is. Right. And train, uh -huh. driving, that's minimal, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is if we don't have it in the budget, is there something locally that is on par? And that's the reason I'm asking. Because I think we need to stick to our budget. Of course. And our budget for, for school board um, conferences was ten thousand, so I'm pretty sure we're nowhere near that. So if I hear this correctly.
understand the political climate moving forward and help to protect the interests of these students by bringing, even if it doesn't necessarily bring six things for us to advocate about, I would hope that, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't have the schedule in front of me of, of what they're proposing as conference as lectures here, but I would hope that it brings back useful information. I just go to us. see Doris Burns Goodwin, that's worth it, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but just from a, from a perspective of what's going to, you know, Hopefully, this is information because I, I, I am nervous about the future of the public schools and we're going to need to collaborate and join together and really unite and advocate for things as a board and also in collaboration with the community. So I think advocacy is probably going to be a pretty valuable tool for us moving forward. So that's my two cents. I think it's worth it. There's no, there's no extension on the deadline if we, don't, if we don't go today. Is there an extra fee? The conference is on. The 29th, so we don't have another meeting to vote. Now, people registered for the Boston um, um, Convention, the National Convention, without a vote, and the vote happened after registration. If you think we are that, I'm sorry? You got in trouble for that? You got in trouble for that? The other issue is the. I'm sorry, you said we got in trouble? Yeah, the, the auditor doesn't want you to. to yeah, but it happened. And approve it. Well, I mean, a lot of these happened. Four people are registered for Boston with no vote, and then we voted, you know, after the fact. Three months later, so I'm just saying there's a deadline of payments. When, when does our budget end? Like so, when does the so June thirty? So June thirtieth, and we usually do our retreat August later. So that would be the next. The problem, the problem with also where the issue is it, it's it's not timely because, and I don't want to be the, the pessimist, but I'm looking at the agenda. It's actually it's actually pretty decent, and, and again, uh, it is very decent. You go see the wind curtains. Would be, I mean, you know, and also, finish, 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 please, uh, please, 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 which would be reason enough. Um, but the processes by which we spend money, budget money, public dollars, is very systematic. And part of that system, systematic process is purchase orders. So you can't spend money until you get a purchase order. You can't get a purchase order until probably Monday at this point, because it is 7 o'clock at night. Um, and then, because you're not going to register, I don't believe, because every time I register a conference, they always want the purchase order. I think Angela so can, can help us with that. Right, but I don't think she can get that till Monday. So that being said, there's, there's logistical issues. Plus, I'm, not, I'm told 9 or 50, I haven't seen the budget. We can put it out there and sign on for an action. If the board wants to take action blindly, technically, we're not supposed to take action until administration has an opportunity to provide input, even arguably with, our, even reason arguably reason with our own budget. But you know, if the board wants to move blindly, I can I don't agree with it. I, I, I think it's a great conference. I think we can learn a lot from it. I think we're gonna learn a lot from from NISPA, the national conference, because there's gonna be a lot of things on advocacy advocacy there. NISPA has been sending out you guys must have been receiving mass emails from NISBA, NISBA with respect to the advocacy they're doing, with respect to, especially with the new political climate. There's like tons of stuff right here, right in Albany. And, and that, that we're kind of skipping over to a certain extent because we're going to go to Washington, D.C. instead of focusing on the NISBO, who we pay to join, be part of their group. So, um, you know, that being said, you know, Pennywise kind of foolish to a certain extent. And again, it's not on the agenda for a vote, and I don't see how we can actually vote on it. It's, it's blind, a blind vote, and I feel it's, it's kind of irresponsible. Regardless of how good this is, unfortunately, it just we got the email for this conference like two weeks ago. As opposed to where the nice if they sent it out, maybe they did, we just didn't see it. Maybe if NISA had sent it out maybe in early December, it would have been a little bit easier to promote this process. But you know, sending this out two weeks before the conference is kind of absurd, especially in this climate, especially in this type of business where you need POs and approvals and what have you. Uh, so there isn't, there's no, there's no, it's not on for an action item. Going on for a discussion item. So we can discuss it. Can I ask one last question? <laughs> and I don't know who knows this. Do they typically put these out on webcasts after the event? I, I don't know. I know what NISBA does with a lot of their things. Well, I'm just saying. have to register and pay the fee before you're permitted <coughs> to get any webcasts. Or I don't know and I don't know if there's, there's a fee anything. that you could pay afterwards that's to get it. That's why I'm asking. I don't know what, okay. what they do. For National do the same thing. If you are registered as a district, you are able to have an access to get on the app. And actually, after you, the after you, they want to make sure they get the money in advance. I just want to respond to a couple of other well, things. In this one, we were able to get on it. So I didn't go to this one. And I was able to get on this one down. 
the well, last time. But this was different, but this, that's why I'm This isn't this is national. national. No, but I would say it's national. national. I didn't have to download anything I wanted on there. But this is not national. national. That's why I'm asking if there's a difference if yeah, they right. make it available after national. that. National. Oh, I meant that's what I meant. This is national. national. You said this. And it's being. Sorry. Yes. Okay, so I just want to talk about a couple of things you said, Teresa. We have an opportunity to put this on the agenda. I've sent multiple reminders. So it could have been a voting item on the agenda. And I, the, I can't answer why you didn't put it, because you got information on the 11th, and that was the... I'm sorry? I didn't get the information on the 11th. I just received the information with respect to the budget. No, I'm talking about the information about the conference that you requested from me. I sent that on the 11th, January 11th. I mentioned... The email that Teresa said we received them on the 10th, and so we have 10 days to put it on the agenda today. The fact that it's not on the agenda, I think you set the agenda with the administration, so you take ownership of that. The second piece, I'm sorry? I didn't really set the one as I do on a typical. Uh, What's the, the board, agenda? Board president's What's responsibility to set the agenda with the administration. But anyway, well, the meeting was it's a special meeting. I also did not get a response regarding our budget at all, or whether there's money or not. I'm still at 538. I don't think that allows for a conversation. Hence, the conversation, unfortunately, is requiring time now. Thirdly, thirdly, um, going back to this particular conference, um, whatever's not in the agenda. I am offering to subsidize from my own pocket. It's not a blind vote. We are having a conversation about it. Everybody received the information by email. On January 10th and again on January 11th. So there's nothing blind. Thank you. Okay, so that's discussion. Well, I, let, let me so just see if we, we No, just see if we can clarify it. So that, yeah, we don't end up just having it hang off. Do, do we as a board feel that this conference is worthwhile for Romani to go and represent the district. I mean, I think that's one of the questions that we want to ask. Do we feel that way? That there's enough substance in there that it's worthwhile to have somebody attend. Now, either you or I can go, Romani's willing to do that representing the advocacy committee. Okay, so do we feel that well, way? I, I'm sure that it's a very informative, exceptional conference. I think what we decide is do we want to blindly vote and potentially tap out our budget for the rest of the year without knowing exactly what we're voting on? Are we prepared to do that? Are we prepared to say that this conference is important enough that we're willing to that that we're willing to potentially spend every dollar we have left on our budget? Do you want to read it? No, I, I, I have read it. No, I've read it. And also, why are we tapping out our budget? Like, where's the rest of the well, budget? That's something I, mean, I can't, I don't think anybody can answer that right now. No, I just, just don't know why everybody don't know. But the fact is, 950 is the number. Right. I just decided to know that. Why did you set it on? Right. I have no idea what vote number. Like, why do I agree with I don't know. I just think that's it's very difficult, as, as excellent as I'm sure it is, and, and I have no doubt that it is. <laughs> it's difficult for me to sit and vote on something where. Uh, you know, every dollar that's left is going to disappear on January 20th, when there's still six months of the year to go. And typically what would happen is we would bring this up for a discussion, and any questions or, or issues that any board member had or any information they would want, we would, we would get that information between now and, and the next meeting. I have a feeling and, then, so. and, then, and then they can make their decision to have the next meeting, just like we did with, with these, the items that were on today. We had a discussion at the last meeting. In fact, it was on as, a, as an action item the last meeting, and I took it off because it needs to be a discussion. It's a discussion and then action. Um, and I have to uh, agree with Matt. You know, any, any, almost every conference, so through NISMA and through NSBA, is, is of value because they're great programs. They provide great programs for free information. Um, I think, especially in light of the fact that we're going to the national conference that has advocacy as part of its one of the eight highlights, that. You know, we're, we're, we're spending the last dollar in our, in our budget, because arguably, whether it's $900, $1,000, $800, what you're, what you're saying is, whatever it is, you'll pay the rest. So we are, we are, so for using, example, up, we are using, we are using our entire budget. Right. That's so, that's so, Amani, 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 you know, Amani, 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 Amani,
And unfortunately, we didn't get the information until too late, you know, and that's not on any of us necessarily, you know. I'm surprised this only said, and maybe they did send it out earlier, I don't know. But, you know, again, to take, take a vote tonight for, for, I'm not sure for what, for that for the registration. So, that's what I was not um, Go ahead, Teresa. Yeah, and I hate to even ask this question at this point, but let's say we, we I don't disagree with what Matt's saying, and that's why I'm asking for the numbers. What is the cost to drop out of the registration if we find, get the numbers and get the information? And, and we wouldn't be able to do that as a meeting, because we don't have a meeting between now and the conferences. So it's not even like we can, I, I just don't, I'm, I'm looking to look at budgets and so ask the, to see if yeah, we have Yeah, the, the other cost like, would be, like you said, driving. Uh, I drive to DC, it's no problem. I don't need to reimburse for that. That's not an issue. Even if I find a cheap train ticket, I'm happy to pay. And um, other costs would be a hotel. I, you know, again, there are cheaper hotels than what they're advertising. That's why I'm not pushing for the Marriott Marquis to want to join. I think that's ridiculous. Um, but but the registration is really the big part of it. And if I register individually, I have to pay a higher registration than what we pay through the through the district because we're members as a district in the organization. We pay dues to National and New York State School Board Association in order to get that discounted registration. So that's basically what we're voting on is to get the registration because of the deadline and the cost, and that's it. You know, what you know, again, I, as I mentioned, we're not spending money we don't have, but I really would like to see that budget and where the money went because nobody has traveled yet at all this year. That's Nowhere. Why we don't have it because this is now being brought up today. No. We don't have the, we don't have that in front of us. No. This is what we're discussing. Yeah. So you, but it wasn't. But it yeah, wasn't you don't have the last thing, so we don't have the information in front of us. Sure. There lies the problem right. that we're talking about right now. That's why I'm trying to see if there's anything in here. As far as I know, we have to move on. So, um, I'm mean, I think at this point, that's, 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 what we, that's our discussion. Um, there's nothing else on the agenda. No, so I'd like to make a motion to actually take a vote on it. That's, that's what you want me to do. I could have been on the agenda and we were avoided a lot of this time. There's a motion. I'll get the motion to amend the agenda. I'm not quite sure what the verbiage is. It has to be very specific. A motion to vote on um, Board of Education to vote on um, Rampo Central School District um, registering a board member for the Advocacy and National School Board Association Advocacy Institute. So just on the registration, that's all we need to vote on. Other expenses we'll have to discuss what's there and please share the information with the rest of us. So the vote is just for the registration? Yeah. I second it. Any discussion? I think it's extremely irresponsible to vote on something where we don't know what the budget is. I think, I think, all those, I think anybody, it's, all those it's best not to all use that favorite. language. All I think we, we need to respect each other more than that. I'm not in your favor, I assume. All those in favor, I'm trying to get the vote. The labels are responding to vote all that. That's not the question. That's not All those in favor? All those opposed? So, what is, so, so this is for registration for the Advocacy yeah. Institute, which says 2017 historic changes are happening to Washington. The administration will be nine days old, and advocates for public education can make a deep impression on the new Congress. A single party opposed to control both houses of the Congress, plus a new Supreme Court appointment on the horizon. The impact of public schools could be unprecedented. So, let's have the motion. Now more than ever, I'm just trying to read this out loud so everybody knows what they're voting on because I don't think everybody has looked at this yet. Oh. Um, now more than ever, you can benefit from key insights into Washington's new education agenda from people who are shaping it. With high profile speakers such as Doris Jones Goodwin and Paul Clement, this is one advocacy that we're not doing this. Clearly, you know, it's marketed very well. Um, and I, I would like to hear what you say. I can't go myself, so, um, so the, this is a motion to vote on uh, the register. Subsidizing, being able to pay a subsidized registration fee for one board member to go and represent us in Washington. Correct? 695. 695. Okay. Um, I move. I move. I'm following the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. I was saying because I just don't have the information. I can't hold it. It's too bad you don't have the information. All right, motion to adjourn the meeting. Clark, Craig, second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.